Part three of my new boat. Why did I pick this boat? Why did I pick the modifications? Stay tuned. Okay, let's start out with the boat that I picked. The 175 TXW Tournament Edition, after looking at everything, was gonna fit my needs. I needed to fit inside a gate that's only eight feet, four inches wide, and that boat with trailer was gonna be able to do that. Luckily, I was able to put my boat in the garage. Could I have gotten a bigger boat? Maybe, but it was cutting close with what I got, so I'm happy with a 175. The only option I added to it, two options actually, is I like the red. Uh, seeing the red tracker boats on the water, they look sharp. And also, my truck's red. So I wanted something to kind of go together. The other thing is, uh, some of the lakes, Roosevelt and some of the other lakes along the Salt River chain, uh, it's mountain driving going up and down there. So I wanted to make sure that I got the additional brake package. So that's... All I added to it was a brake package. Didn't want the console, didn't want the 75 horsepower motor. I just wanted the brake package. So that's what I got and that was is what was sent to me. So I ordered the boat, it was already getting made. Now it was a matter of what modifications can be made to the boat once it arrived. So working with tracker boats up in Phoenix, Arizona, actually Mesa, Arizona, uh, I talked to them about some of my needs. I like to fish alone. So loading and unloading the boat, pulling the trolling motor up, setting it down, wasn't real attractive to me. So the Ulterra with the remote control where it deploys itself, it stows itself. Yeah, I got the one, does my our boat do that? If you've ever seen their commercial, that's the one I got. So now I can go fishing, launch my boat as it's floating away from the trailer. I can deploy the, the trolling motor, tell it to anchor, wait till I get back from parking my truck, walk out to the dock, use the remote, bring the boat over to me, get on board and go fishing. So that was a real attraction to me, the Ultura. So the Lowrance, five inch triple shot was not going to meet my needs. I wanted to upgrade to something better. How big could I get for best bang for the buck, so to speak? So the Hummingbird Helix nine inch was perfect for my needs. Uh, it actually turned out better than what I thought it was going to be. I probably could have gone with a seven inch, but hey, I like the nine inch. Uh, it has uh, on the console. I got the side imaging and the down imaging So I can use that when I'm going along it has the uh, quick buttons on it So I have one set for when I'm fishing and and I want to see the scan And I want to see the mega down imaging side by side have another one set for when I have the map I want to see the side imaging I want to see the down imaging all at the same time then I have another one where it's the side imaging and the down imaging. So I have three options in there. Those are my three favorite. And so I just have my, my quick, quick buttons uh, set up for that. So that was really nice on that. On the bow one, I didn't need the side imaging. I wanted the down imaging and I talked to them. And instead of ordering the fish finder with a transducer, since the Ultrex, has the or the Ulterra has the uh, the transducer already built into it. All I needed was the graph itself, nothing else. I didn't need a transducer, so that was a little bit of money savings there, and uh, got that connected. Since I had the Ulterra, the bow mount helix, and the console helix, now I needed an Ethernet system to tie those three together because they can communicate with one another. The bow mount can operate off the, the rear transducer. The console mount can operate off the trolling motor transducer. So uh, I, wherever I'm at on the boat, I can see the same thing throughout. Uh, 
what we're finding out fishing is it's kind of nice for my son to see what's on the bow and for me to see what's on the stern and kind of compare them. He'll say, hey, there's a school of fish heading your way. And then I'll see him start to enter into my screen and know where, where to, to throw my bait. So it kind of helps him team that way. Uh, we haven't tried using the uh, combination of, of one transducer for, for both yet, but that's going to come. There's still a lot to learn about this, this unit. Uh, it, it's really great. Uh, next trip out, I'm going to be using the uh, deploy and stow because one thing I found out is is the deploy and stow. I have to give it the remote out. Then I have to make sure it's turned on. And then I have to hit the button twice for deploy. Where all I have to do is just reach up on the fish finder and push deploy and it deploys the trolling motor. And then I unbuckle from my safety vest and go fish. So that's going to be nice to have that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I had a, uh, a Minn Kota MKA 21 quick release for my fish finder. So if we go fishing, we go to a hotel and I was like, nah, I don't know about leaving my, my trolling motor on there. I can remove it, take it into the hotel room with me and load it back on the boat in the morning when we go fishing. Uh, do that already with the uh, with the fish finders to make sure those are secured. Uh, so I had that option with it. Uh, there's a thing about if you have a problem and you can't raise it, uh, which it's always good to be prepared for problems. Uh, it's nice to have a quick release so you can disconnect the trolling motor from the boat, raise it up, lay it in the boat, disconnect the power to it before you do that and then uh, take care of it. Otherwise you have to pop the plate off and there's a, a way of getting the motor up because you can't just pull it up like a normal trolling motor. So it's kind of nice to have that addi additional feature uh, for it. I didn't know about the, if it won't come up needing that. So it turned out that it was a good thing that I did that. The other thing I added to it was the Minn Kota MKA 55 it's the uh, bow mount stabilizer so when that when the motor comes down it actually comes down and it and it seats right in that stabilizer so it holds it so if we hit rough water uh it's not bouncing around and also if we're traveling down the road and hit some bumps speed bumps hit a hit a hole or something like that it it has a strap on it so it's strapped down to it so it helps protect it. One of the features I'm finding on the Helix that I that I really like is some of the lakes that I fish they're they're not charted you know what's the where's the shelves where's the holes where's the ledges uh, it has auto chart on it so I can auto chart what I'm learning though is I have to set both helixes the bow and the console to auto chart if I want to have the same information on both otherwise I have to get that uh, Lake Master zero line card and move it from one to the other to me it's just easier if I'm going to auto chart it just set both of them up auto chart go do my auto charting turn it off and then next time I hit that lake hey I know where all the ledges are so it's kind of neat and it gives you current information. Sometimes what you get off of uh, Navionics and Lake Master isn't 100% accurate. So you're getting information that's, that's current, that's right there for you and uh, kind of a nice added feature to it. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with those units. Uh, they're turning out a lot better than what I thought they would be. So one of the things that I created a problem when I had the Ultera installed was uh, it extends out beyond the boat a little bit further. So the step for mounting the boat from the bow uh, had to be removed. It's, it's not functional. I'll probably end up selling that on Craigslist or 520 Bass or, or somewhere. Just find somebody that can use it. I mean, it's a nice step. It just won't fit my boat. So as an alternative, more expensive, but how do you put a price on a broken back or broken ribs 
from falling off the boat trying to dismount or mount off the bow. So I found this, it's called Trick Step, and it is trick. I like it. Uh, Try getting up on it in the, in the garage, and it, it's kind of cool. Got it adjusted to where I want it, and it was easy. All I had to do was the swing tongue is reverse the bolt, so instead of swinging to the right, it swings to the left, to port side, driver's side, whatever you want to say if you're talking about the vehicle, and uh, mounted it on there. So that, the, the tongue, that was one bolt, uh, the uh, mounting it to the trailer that was four bolts and then mounting the handle that they have that comes with it to the to these steps was two more bolts so a total of seven bolts that I had to mess with to mount it I think it took me all of oh my gosh 15 minutes to mount it on there I it, it was so easy I, I'm impressed with it it's well built it has anti-slip pads on it. They put a yellow line on there so you can see it. At, if, it's, if it's dark, you can see the edge of the steps. And it's, it's going to make mounting and, and dismounting off the bow a lot easier. I don't have to carry my stepladder anymore to load from the side of the boat. I can load off the, the bow. So I, I think that's going to be a really, really nice feature. I uh, just got that in this week and be using it this weekend. Um, did not like the, the, uh, standard knuckle buster, uh, transom straps to, to secure the boat to the trailer off the back. So I got some, uh, boat buckle, uh, quick release. Oh, those things are so nice. Uh, make sure if, if you have a tracker, you get the adapter for it. You cannot mount the the bolt buckle directly to the frame. Get the adapter. You look at it, it's like, ah, is this gonna work? Yeah, it works. It uh, works perfect and uh, got it lined up. The straps aren't rubbing on either side. Uh, when it comes to launching the boat, you just flip the switch, unhook it, it retracts into it, and you're good to go. And then when you load it back up, you don't have to mess around with it. Oh, where are the straps? You just Pull it up, hook it, wrench it down a couple times till it's tight, and you're done with it. Uh, nice feature that I that I added to it. Uh, talking about some of the likes and dislikes, and there's there's a few dislikes I have about the boat, but but not many. Uh, when you see it's going to be like, oh really? That's it? That's all you dislike? Yeah, that's all I dislike. So it's real easy to launch. The boat is real easy to launch. Uh, it's easy for trailering. Uh, I thought it'd be hard. Uh, this is my first boat that I've ran up on the trailer with the outboard and uh, pretty easy. Got to get used to the wind pushing me around. And my son said, Pop, you're a little too cautious. You, you need to come in a little bit faster so that so that you line up with the boat better so the wind's not affecting you. So yeah, it, take, it takes practice. Uh, the boat has plenty of storage. I like taking eight rods and reels with me. I take four spinner, four bait casters, and, uh, and my son takes his eight, and we load up the lockers. The lockers, uh, I found if you put the sleeve guides over the rods, they're easier to slip in and out of the tubes because uh, those tubes are a little bit tight and they bend around the bow to get those longer longer rods in there, but they fit. After practice, you, you get to figure out the easiest way to load and unload your, your rods. Uh, plenty of storage space, space for tackle. Uh, I was worried that I had too much tackle. Uh, I'm not like Wheeler, where, where he really loads up with, with uh, tackle, but have enough room in there for all my tackle, my son's tackle. Have the two in the back that I put my uh, Plano 3700s in there. I think I put four on one side. I put all my soft baits on the other side. And I like fishing off the back uh, for now. Uh, when I go out by myself, I'll probably be fishing off the, off the bow a little bit. But uh, it, it's nice. It's nice to have all your lures there and everything 
right handy so you can switch out and, and just keep fishing and not waste your day messing around with line and lures and stuff. Um, front trim switch is pretty nice. Uh, my son will say, hey, we're getting into shallow water uh, off, and it's not showing it off my off the back yet. And uh, he'll tilt up the, the motor uh, off the bow. That's kind of nice. Um, the half steps, the half steps, me having a bad hip, uh, stepping up and down those half steps within the boat, I really, really like. That makes going from the lower deck to the, to the back deck to the front deck a lot easier. Um, gauges, uh, I'm kind of impressed with the gauges that it has on it. Uh, the standard of the tachometer, uh, you know, tachometer, you don't want to get it over 6,000 RPMs on the 60 horse motor. Uh, I don't know what it is on the 75 for anybody that opts for that. So uh, it'll be in the manual you get with it. What I really like is the trim indicator. I'm getting to know just by looking at the indicator, then listening to the, the uh, motor. I know right about when the, boat, the motor is going to cavitate and I need to back off. I'm getting used to it at what RPM, what trim setting. So I'm getting the max performance off the boat. The boat rides really, really nice off the back pad. Uh, I, I got a uh, GoPro Max with 360 video on it. And uh, that's another story. Uh, and uh, I'm looking at it and I'll, I'll turn it around to see how we're going. And, and you can tell the boat is riding real nice on the pad. I can feel the steering is real good. Uh, we hit waves and the bow just cuts right through the waves. It, it's really, I'm enjoying the boat. I'm, I'm enjoying the boat more than I thought I would. Um, water pressure doesn't have a temperature gauge. Uh, the next thing is the water pressure. And when Joe was explaining it to me, he said, get to know that, it, you know, each motor is a little bit different. Get to know what your, your water pressure is. Uh, at different RPMs and watch for it. If you see a decrease in it, that's a good indicator that, that uh, the intake is plugged up. So shut the motor off, raise it up and check it. Make sure it's cleared off that it's getting water in there, uh, that it's not clogged up and your water overheats. So that's, that's a nice feature. I, I like that feature. Uh, it has a voltage gauge so you know that you're getting the volt speedometer and, and fuel gauge standard stuff. but. But the ones that I pay the most attention to are the tachometer and the, and the water pressure, making sure that, that I'm not overrunning the engine, over revving the engine, and that also it's getting sufficient water and, and listening to it if it's cavitating. Uh, it's very stable on the water for fishing. Uh, sometimes boats go by and it rocks. Uh, the boat doesn't rock too bad. You know, uh, my little 12 foot boat, Oh my gosh, you, you didn't want to be out there when boats were uh, going by. But with this one, it, it, it's, it's not bad. Um, I replaced the, uh, the uh, two seats and put a pedestal seat on it. Actually went and got a, uh, when I went to Tracker, I talked to the guy and he said, well, we got this one that's 200 bucks. He said, but go out there on the board and, and look, I found one that was perfect for 39 bucks. So. Uh, you know, shop around for that. And it's one that I can adjust the height on it and everything, and it's, it's working perfect. When my hips bother me, I just sit down, I relax on it, and, and I just keep fishing. Um, helix units are easy for my old eyes, like I said earlier. Uh, I'm really impressed with those. They're great. Uh, accurate waypoints. Uh, real accurate waypoints. I looked at Navionics and then compared it to to it. Sat in the garage and set a couple of waypoints before we went up to Bartlett and uh, found a couple of them. The depths weren't quite what they said they were going to be uh, because the lake was full. And uh, the one we wanted to go to before we left, uh, lo and behold, somebody else found that waypoint too because they were sitting right on top of it. So, yeah, you got to share. It's public waters. Um, let's see, still learning it. There's a lot to learn, uh, learning how to, uh, 
use the uh, helixes for controlling the uh, the trolling motor. Uh, probably take me about a year for it. You need a PhD to operate that thing. I, I started reading through it and it's like, I don't know if I'm gonna get all this, but I'm getting there. Livewell works really good, uh, worked out real good. The only problem we had with the uh, Livewell, and I'll get into that in the, in the dislikes, uh, is uh, battery that came with the boat was set up for the Lorances and for the Maxim trolling motor. Putting the, uh, uh, the uh, helixes on there, uh, they seem to have more draw with the two of them or, or something. And running the live well all day, so the battery, uh, we got done down on Patagonia and, and uh, lo and behold, we had to go back, we went that far from the dock, go back to the dock with the trolling motor because cranking battery was dead, uh, wouldn't turn over the motor. So took it back to Tracker, they checked out, battery is good. Uh, I talked to them about, hey, let's put a bigger battery. I like the size of the trolling motors, that cranking battery is a little bit small. And they upgraded that. I paid the difference in the price on it and uh, actually paid the price for the new one. They pulled the old one out. That's going to my son's 87 Bayliner. And uh, so it's not going to waste. That and the Lorances and the uh, Maxim uh, trolling motor are all going on the on the bay liner, so they'll get use. The one thing that I'm kind of disappointed in, both my son and I, is is we'll load up with ice and our and our waters and and power drinks and everything, our our protein drinks and everything in the morning. Uh, get out there and by midday, it's, the ice is water. Uh, don't I just get a feeling they did not insulate that very well. So I tried getting a gallon jug, freezing that in the freezer, putting that in there, and then putting the ice. And uh, still, I mean, the ice didn't melt as bad, but it's still pretty much melted. I expected a better insulated uh, uh, cooler in there. That's so Tracker needs to do a better job on that. Other than that, I'm really enjoying the boat. I'll uh, probably give you an update in a year on seeing how much I like the boat. If you're looking for a good boat, uh, I like it. I hope everything I, I talked about here, everything I did on my boat, helps you in your decision if you're looking to buy a new boat. And uh, happy fishing. Hope to see you out there on the water. Oh, man.